Hey everybody, I don't normally do videos on Thursday, but I ran across an article as I was finishing putting away some food here that uh, I think you might want to pay attention to, mainly because of the source of where the article comes from. So, let's get into it. So I was out here this afternoon just putting away some stuff. This is kind of the last of my weekly pickups of preps. I've decided to put my non-fat milk into those little pouches with some oxygen absorbers. And I'm putting away all these lentils because I just love lentils and I can make lentil stuff out of it. It's really good. And the last of that stuff which has to go in my room anyway. But as I was browsing around on my uh, tablet, I came across an article that uh, basically is saying that you uh, might want to prep for a lot longer than some people have been thinking about prepping for. Now, I don't want this article to make people feel discouraged. I don't want you to feel like, oh, I just got started and I'm doing all this and I felt like I was in a really good place and now I'm back to square one and I have nothing again. I don't want you to feel like that. Whatever you're doing is going to improve your situation down the road and that's very, very important. So, with that said, we're going to talk about this article. And basically, he's talking about opening his Overton window. In other words, moving what we're used to over a little more. And this one's going to blow it out of the water, he said. Um, it's by Michael Yawn. Now, if you guys have seen any kind of combat footage, you've probably seen his pictures. If you look on the bottom of all those pictures of Afghanistan and oh, in, the, in Ukraine and all over, you've probably seen his footage, his, his pictures and his, uh, his video. Uh, he's a combat correspondent, and he's seen this kind of stuff devolve in these countries. So he kind of has a little bit of perspective and knows what he's talking about a little bit. And basically, it's kind of like basically a way of saying prep for two years because it's going to be ugly. The first thing he talks about is saying he's, he sounded pretty crazy in January 2020 when he was warning about potential power outages, major wars, and famines. And that's what he calls the Panfa War, okay? The idea was a mile outside of his Overton window, and he's reluctant. he was kind of reluctant to express anything about it due to being dismissed as a quack. And, you know, he, he warned about the Iraq Civil War in 2005. He warned about losing the Afghanistan War in 2006. And that the Chinese might soon take over Hong Kong in 2019. And those were mostly outside of what we expect, or his Overton window. Today, they're common knowledge. And then he says, well, he's going to take a thousand-foot leap out of that Overton window today. And he starts off with, if you have not stockpiled at least two years of supplies, just stop what you're doing and get to it plant a garden, get chickens, learn to fish. Um, he does mention that he's never sold any kind of supplies on his site, that he doesn't make any money off it. Um, basically, he tells you to stock up, and he says most of his readers are smart enough to read the pages, and they've been preparing for a long time, comparing notes with each other, and searching for holes in their strategies. He says some folks have even gone so far as doing dry runs by turning off their water and electricity for varying periods of time in order to you know, check out their weaknesses. And that is a very good idea if you can do that. Um, if you can get your family on board and spend a weekend um, turning your power off and just seeing where it goes. Um, I know it's kind of difficult if you've got kids and they want their electronic devices and all, but it is something to definitely try out. Another thing he mentions on here is self-defense is vital. Uh, he mentions that he feels 9-11-9-1-1 is a joke. Sounds like a public enemy song. <laughs> uh, we're our own keeper and a grandmother with a little training can throw some serious defense downrange. And the reason he's talking about this is because later, later this year he feels we're going to see governments within the United States starting with price controls and increased subsidies. Uh, he feels governments always do this when they're losing control and these policies will only exacerbate situations. The U.S. will push to make uh, rationing electronic to gain even more control of every aspect of our existence, and all the indicators are there. And that's kind of the scuttlebutt he's been hearing. Now, I have heard that myself, too, um, that uh, there's a good possibility that down the road we could see some kind of, you know, like we saw with the vaccine passports, some kind of um, electronic rationing via our cell phones and QR codes and all that. So it does make sense that that could happen. Let's see how we can do this without spilling everything. Uh, and that's a real concern because there's really, you know, unless you are very experienced in the finer arts of hacking, there's really not a way to get around that. Also, too, I feel we're a much different society than we were back, say, during World War II when there was rationing 
And I don't think that would go over very well with people. I think people would cheat the system. They try to lie. They try to steal. They try to do whatever they can to um, to bypass the rations. Okay, so the lentils are all sealed up. Let's move on to the next thing. Uh, anyway, stock up thick, he says. The clock is ticking. Conditions are set. 2020 will become serious, which we're already seeing. And 2020, 2023 will be a year of starvation in many countries. He says he doesn't see a way out of this. Uh, there's too much inertia and sabotage. And serious famine creates real pandemic, more war, and what they call the human osmotic pressure, which leads to migrations. In other words, everybody flees from where the bad area is into where the good area is. So Panpa Wars, he says, with its recursive variables, can be like an indoor fire. The heat can't quickly escape, and it will cause more fuel to burn and heat feedback or flashover. Last thing he mentions on here, and this is very interesting, is that war creates famine, creates pandemic, creates war, creates famine, creates migration, creates war. And it's kind of an endless circle of things, you know, uh, that, that go on. And people look around and say, boy, <laughs> people who did this sure were stupid. We'll never do that again. And then they do. They don't learn from their history. So one of the biggest lessons in history is that people don't learn from it. Despite all that's written in books, they just don't catch on very well. So that's definitely something to think about. Um, a lot of people feel, and he does too in this article, that there's a dark side controlling this. Uh, they want to control us via their vaccines, their food control, whatever. Um, you know, and I, Generally, I don't do a lot of dark opinion on this page, but I have kind of seen a tilt towards that in our government in the last few years. Uh, it, it feels as if they really do want to have complete control of everything, and the minute there's a situation, they jump right on, and start telling us how we should uh, how we should behave. I'm going to turn that on so it doesn't turn off. So imagine a real food shortage requiring rationing, okay? And imagine how well that would go over in today's society. I don't I don't see it as, as workable. I just don't see it as being something that we would uh, we would get through easily. So for me, that's why I'm stocking up. And I was kind of doing this out here today, and I ran across the article, and I thought you know, it might be worthwhile to let people know about it. So, his final things are here is uh, sometimes, sometime a very long time ago, wise people decided to write stuff down. The dark side of the world does not want us to read these things. They want us to believe in censorship and read the words that only they write. They demand the U.S. hide words about any kind of problems with any kind of vaccines or any kind of issues that they don't want you to hear anything whether it be bad news about the economy, whether it be bad news about food production, whatever, they don't want you to know that, okay? And the wise ones always are the ones to throw open the doors and let the sun shine in across places and faces. And he finishes it up with, we're at war, the very dark force. The dark side's not invincible. They may be strong and clever, but not wise and not invulnerable. And his final words basically jab it, poke it, choke it, bleed it, wear it down. All right, we have the right to live free, but we must take it. We never ask for freedom. We take it. We, don't pick, but we pick our battles wisely. You have to appear to submit sometimes and study what they're doing, and one day your day will come. So that's basically his perspective on this. What got me interested in the article is the fact that, you know, he does really believe that this will be a two-year issue, a two-year famine possibly, uh, maybe even longer. I've heard other people mention it could be much, much longer. And that's why one of the reasons I'm telling people now, things are expensive, but they're still affordable. You can still get them. So if you have a chance to get out there and to shop and to get your stuff, start doing it now, okay? And that means bulk packing stuff. That means just this stuff. It could mean our freeze-dry wholesaler stuff. Whatever you can manage to get your hands on at this point with the finances that you're comfortable with, start stocking up because this is the kind of thing that leads to absolute chaos. And imagine... Imagine your kids are at home hungry, okay, and you go to the store with your cell phone and they scan it and say, sorry, we're out, you, you've used up your ration of cereal, no cereal for you this week. You know, back in World War II days, people would accept that. They were doing what they could for the country. They were being strong and, you know, today you would see YouTube videos and World Star videos of people flipping out all over the place. So you don't want to be anywhere near that situation. So your best bet is to start stocking up now and getting yourself prepared. And I just thought it was an interesting perspective from this article on how ugly things could get. 
So I'm going to finish packing up my stuff here and packing up my milk. And by the way, it's really interesting. I didn't know this came with individual packages in here. I thought it just came in one package. But I decided to put it all in the MRE pouches as much as I can. I could probably fit about four in there each. Anyway, folks, I thank you for watching. Don't forget to check out all our links down below. Like I mentioned in the video, um, we have our freeze-dry wholesaler link. It saves you 15%, and that food's good for 25 years. So you can put it up somewhere in a fairly climate-controlled environment and know that 10 years from now, if this thing is still going on, that sirloin steak or that broccoli or whatever you put away is still going to be good. Underneath that, we have our My Patriot Supply. That's preparewithiridium.com. If you want to get started, we've got a three-month kit of food, $150 off. It was affordable to start with. Now it's $150 off. Below that is our Thrive Life freeze-dried food. Um, you can check that out as well. And also, too, don't forget our Jace Medical Link. If you need to store antibiotics okay, for emergencies and disasters, Jace Medical is the place to go. You'll do an online consultation. You'll get your antibiotics sent to you be a doctor with a prescription to your door. Very, very cool. Anyway, folks, I thank you for listening to me today and kind of an unusual time to do videos. Stay safe and stay prepared.